I'll go ahead and open the meeting and get us started a little bit early. Somebody comes in fine. Uh, first thing on the agenda is approving the meeting agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Yeah. Opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion approved. And next is the treasurer's report. If you have it in front of you. I want to look over. Motion to approve the treasurer's report. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Same sign. Motion passes. I'd like to um, tell you guys something about the treasurer's report real quick that you may or may not have noticed. But you notice that we don't have on here like our normal monthly bills. That's because the mail between here and Canada wasn't working well. So uh, we ended up having to pay with our card because they weren't receiving our checks. So then once they, we paid with a the card, they also received a check, so they just used it for our next month's bill. So we didn't actually have to pay in September for our lead generation. Um, no, it's, yeah, it is the lead generation, yeah. So that's why you're not seeing that on there because we didn't have a September payment for it because it got paid early. How much was it? Lead generation is, which one is that? 625, 625. Okay, next on the uh, agenda is the minutes. Let's go over please. Second. Any discussion? Not. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to old business. Uh, Trail Town. Trail Town is complete. That project is ready to be closed out. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I have to say about that. It looks good. It does look good. It does not have uh, slot rails like we intended for it to. Those will have to be put in because if you have been down there, like I have, you would not carry a kayak down those steps. They're very, very steep. So uh, the Parks and Rec folks are going to work on getting that in there for us because we didn't have money to include slot rails. So that's why they don't have them. It'll get there. But as far as our part of it and the Trail Town Grant, that's done. <coughs> <coughs> the parks and recs are now available to the proper grants of their own if they would. Yes. Okay. yes. 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 
Okay, for the new members who don't know what we're talking about, the grant that we applied for for that, you can only have one county entity apply for it at a time, and until that's closed out, the other ones can't apply for it. That grant has been open for three years, and our, our Parks and Rec folks could not apply for that grant until we got it closed out. But it was at no fault of ours, it was the river levels were too high the entire time after we got all of the right of ways and all of that all the legal stuff you know through we couldn't put in the access ramps because of the river levels and the flooding the late year flooding so we finally got it done okay digital works update digital works we are about to start our second round of the digital works program in order to meet the obligations of that grant it shows on our um, county funds let's see if it's on here the grant um, that we have $17,150 remaining in that um, and so we will use those funds to uh, meet the obligations of how many numbers of students we have to train um, we hope that we can afford to do even more than that we'll see how it turns out but seven more is our goal because we did seven last time that program was very successful. It is the first remote work training program that we've had that has been very successful. It's only four weeks. It's much cheaper than the other programs we were doing and it includes job placement. So they're actually getting them jobs once they're done with their four weeks training. Our, our really shining star in that was Sarah Chin. You may have seen the story in the paper um, or on OC Monitor or on our Facebook or wherever, but Sarah Chin completed the program in april is that correct christina april mm -hmm. completed the program in april was hired immediately by teletech and then uh, she's now been promoted twice she's making 1750 an hour working full-time from home so um, and every one of those students who completed that program who applied for jobs and sought employment did get hired and are working successfully in remote work jobs here in ohio county so good so that program is really great. I wish we could start over with that grant money and just do Connected Nation Digital Works, but you can't um, go back in time, so it is what it is. This is how much money we have left. Maybe we can get another grant and you know do it again in the future because it is creating jobs. How much does it cost? Uh, I think this one is $1,200 per student. It's complicated because the more students you have, the less it costs per student, and then the more time it takes for them to get them job placement, you're paying for those services too, so it fluctuates. But it's around twelve to $1,500 a student, if I remember correctly, plus some fees in there. Um, and I think this, the programs that we did before was about $10,000 per student, just to give you a comparison. So $10,000 per student, they weren't getting jobs, they weren't graduating, they weren't completing the programs, versus now, you know, we're spending, I don't know, $15,000 to $2,000, and I'm guessing. Um, because like I said it fluctuates right now we have spent about 10,000 on those seven students but I'm sure there's more invoices coming in for the job placement services so it's much much cheaper than what we were doing with the coding boot camps and uh, it is more successful do the students pay anything at all no so it's strictly no pay at all. strictly grant so yeah. even so if we wanted to in the future for possibly a small tuition on their part it's something we could yes we could but uh this one has worked out well the ones before whenever they were dropping out and not completing that was our biggest argument was hey we got all this money we're wasting you don't have any skin in the game and you're dropping out but in their defense the program was not what it was sold to them as for us so i can't really blame them for not finishing that the good news is we did get reimbursed for most of that which is what we're using now to train these other students so most of that money where they did drop out it has come back to us and so we're able to use it and train these students now so that's the good news okay do we have a video we're going to talk about video yeah our community overview video is finally complete and uh, we will be making modifications to it it is you know something we can add stuff to as things come around and all that but the basic video is complete and hopefully we can show it to you guys. I'm just looking to see if I can stick this in here. 
that's not like ours that swivels, so I might be safer just using this little laptop. Well, if you want to move on to new business while she sets that up, that's okay too with me. Yeah, I want to. You want to go into new business to talk about the chapel, so is project? Yeah, so the chapel um, has never been remodeled. It's just, uh, you know, it's just been sitting there kind of empty. We hope to eventually turn it into an external classroom out there or another office space that we could rent, but um, we just didn't have any money to renovate it, so we didn't. But um, Soreheads approached us asking if they could rent the space to do a pop-up Christmas shop for just uh, from now until December. So um, they did rent it. We rented it to them for $150, which is a month, which is what we would normally give them a furnished office space for, but it's empty and not renovated. So I did put a new door on the building because it was molded and it had some problems. So we, we bought a new door and put a new door on it that has a keypad lock on it. Um, but they are, they have the Christmas shop set up in there that'll run through December. We hope it'll also bring people back there and let them know what the hub is and hopefully promote us along with them. But the space is being used and at least we can put it to good use. But you're gonna have to remind me what the chapel is. The so chapel's the building behind the hub. The white building. So it's a little church. It's like a prayer chapel. It's a chapel. Building. Yes. Soft opening Friday. Yes. Yes. It turned out much Pretty nice little building. So, so okay. Is there Project Peacock? Is there an opportunity to market that after or market? The chapel? Yes, that's the intention. Now that it's being used and and they're really pushing it on, you know, social media and stuff and you know, hopefully some other places will use it. We don't have Wi-Fi out there. There's not a bathroom out there. You know, it's, it's it's got limited uses, but this is a good one. So, I mean, who doesn't want a Christmas shop in a church? Mm -hmm. so. uh, Project Peacock, remind me what that is, Christina. Which project <coughs> is that? Cabinet. Cabinet maker. Okay, yeah. we have the cabinet coming to about county, right? Yeah. We put it together a virtual. Okay, the virtual tour. We've got lots of projects going on right now. We have to give them code names, and sometimes I do this, and then I can't remember which one is which. So we have a um, a cabinet meeting with all the project managers in early January. We will be doing a full presentation of Ohio County to those project managers to help us uh, recruit industry in Ohio County. Probably going to need quite a bit of input from the board, from local businesses. Um, usually it's, you know, the first round is tourism, us, you know, some of the board members, some of the fiscal court uh, presenting why you would live in Ohio County. Well, why would you be here? But with it being all the project managers, kind of want to do a full scope, but it has to be also short enough where we're not driving them crazy and it's going to be virtual. So it'll be mostly video. So we'll, we'll be putting together that uh, plan and then coming to you guys for some help and input, just like we did with the community overview video, which will be part of it, I think. So that's, that's the presentation for the cabinet. Some of the other projects we have going on right now, because I did not send you guys an update this month, we have a cabinet manufacturer that's looking at a property here. We have uh, a company in Germany that I've talked to you guys about before, but now we have two um, cabinet project managers that are actually in Germany right now reaching out to that company for us and working with them to advocate for them to come to Ohio County. Um, and then we have, we have a few others that I just found out about. So. Um, if there's any properties that you guys know of that are two to five acres or any buildings 5,000 to 6,000 square feet that are available by a highway, near a highway, please let me know. Okay. Lead generation management. Lead generation. 
Oh, yes. Okay, so we did uh, get a new subscription for our, to manage our leads because we do have a lead a day and that's hard to track and hard to keep up with. That subscription is only like $12 a month, but it does keep all of our uh, lead tracking together. So if we don't talk to a company for a year, we can go back and we know exactly where we left off with them, what they were looking for, you know, why we were interested in them, et cetera. So um, that's just a, it's just another software for us to use to manage you know, what we're doing. Any questions about that? I remember the name of that software. Mm -hmm. CRM. It's a less annoying CRM. And I think it's fifteen dollars a month. Oh, that's awesome. It, it, it's really cool. Get off with it. It tracks all of the emails that you send to everybody who's affiliated or associated with that project. Um, and keeps I mean it just you know, makes it organized. It even tells us when they open the emails too. Mm -hmm. So we can see if they're actually looking at us even if they don't respond, you know, that's the thing. The intern at Tahoe. We do have an intern. Um, this was through Brad and the program that they have there. Uh, they are paying their salary. He's an IT intern. So hopefully he's going to help us with some of the IT disasters we have going on there. But um, he's a really nice kid and he's working, uh, what was it, 15 hours a week? Mm -hmm. 15 hours a week is, is when we have him now and uh, it's a really cool program. I mean, they came to us and said, hey, if you want an intern, just tell us how much you want to pay him and we'll send him to you and we'll pay him. I'm like, yeah, we're not turning that down. So, so I was like, yeah, sure, that. pay him. Fifteen dollars an hour. I don't know. Yes, pay him whatever you can pay him. However much you can pay him, pay him that. We've so. used that three different times, and it's been it's huge. Brad, yes. it's a great chance to get that on-site training. Brad yes. absorbs the cost of it. We actually ended up hiring one of the individuals, so yeah. it was it really worked well. It's it's an excellent program. Yes. So he's uh, he's going to help us do some of the social media stuff. He's also helping us troubleshoot whenever we we've got all kinds of technical issues all there there all the time. So he's helping us with all that stuff, and I think it's it's good exposure for him, and it's great for us to have somebody on site that knows a little bit more than we do about some of those things. So is this like a college intern or high school? Or? College. He's with OCTC, and uh, he's working through the job training program. Correct. I think there may be um, economic um, guidelines that they have to meet in order to be in this program. Or if that was the one we had. No. Uh, I don't think this one does. Yeah, the one we had. That but they didn't mention it to us if they yeah, did. Yeah, uh, sure. Maybe. Uh, How long do you have the entire pool? We have him. Um, it's weird because he was already an intern before he got to us, so we get to finish up his time that he already had with another employer and then restart him. And we get to actually promote him during that restart if we keep him, um, and they'll pay him even more. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so we have him, it's supposed to be eight weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And then because we had leftover time from somebody else, eight weeks, I mean, total in time, so he's only working 15 hours a week, so it's a lot longer than that. We have them until like February. Okay. What are we? Uh, what option? What are we talking about here? Well, I don't. I don't think we need to do that. Scratch. Scratch that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we go to comments, and hopefully, if you got comments from your sector or whatever, good news, bad news, give it to us. Uh, Start around the room here. Tell us something good about the education. Well, well, I don't like that. Sure. Um, of course, we we're back in action after having fall break. Um, we do have a few cases in Ohio County Schools. If you follow that dashboard, uh, there are currently seven active cases in Ohio County Schools. One of those will come off tomorrow. That employee gets to return to work. So we'll go back to six of those six. 
two of them are students. One of them is 100% virtual, so they're not coming to the school. So that does leave five individuals that have tested positive that have been at school at some time or another. Of those five, four of these all happened at the end of fall break. So they did not involve any contact tracing. Uh, so if it was going to occur, it was certainly a good time in one sense for us because there was not any of the uh, extra quarantining that occurs. If you follow uh, the Green River Health Department, you saw that I think today they announced that we had 13 cases in Ohio County. So as you can imagine, each of those cases, there's a good chance that it quarantined some of our students or some of our staff, because even though they may not be positive, if mom or dad tests positive, then that kid can't come to school for 10 to 14 days. So we do have uh, about 16 to 17 kids that are quarantined right now due to someone in their household has tested positive with the virus. As you know, we're using the hybrid schedule that seems to be going really well. That's keeping the numbers small. Uh, certainly allows us to do activities like lunch and breakfast and still keep small numbers in the cafeteria without going over any of those guidelines. So things seem to be going well, or at least as well as we can make them go at this point in time. And uh, who knows what the future is going to hold. If, uh, if you look today, if you keep up with the COVID map, today we actually hit red in Ohio County. We sure did. Uh, but that is for one day. We'll see how many days, if we're going to be in red, if it's going to last very long, or could it be short-lived. You know, Davis County was red, but for only three or four days, and now they're back to orange certainly did get the board's permission last month and and the fact that I know the governor and the KDE made the recommendation that if you're red you go to remote learning we after consulting with the board I basically asked their blessing and they gave it that we're not tied to that recommendation but that I use that in part of my overall decision making that yeah we're red but my real determining factor is going to be how many cases are in the schools and do we have an issue and that will determine if we have a shutdown at some point in time. Uh, but as of right now, we will continue going with the hybrid schedule. As far as my second grader, uh, she is very proud to be back uh, two or three days a week. Uh, I know her morale is better. Uh, Basically, everything about her is better because she actually gets some of that time. Uh, you know, and, and I'll be glad when they go back full time because that's where they need to be. But uh, good job. Appreciate it. It hasn't been a, an easy time. The last few months has uh, been just a little bit of a challenge. I've called Scott Lewis a couple times and asked him if he wanted to come and help in some capacity. <laughs> and he turned me down. Yes, he should. Christina has the video ready if we want to pause this part and come back to it and let her play the video. I'm pausing the recording right now. Now it's not convenient to have it on the full pad, but it will be on the website. There's a place that's a natural for outdoor fun and adventure. This is a place where there's always something happening, always something to do. From arts to aviation, and from music to sports and recreation, and exceptional business opportunities for you. Welcome to Ohio County, Kentucky. There's no place quite like it. Ohio County is the home of bluegrass music. Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass, was from Rosie, where the Jerusalem Bridge Bluegrass Festival is held every year. Bluegrass music, along with a variety of music events, arts and crafts shows, great social living, outdoor sports, and fun family events make Ohio County a great place to call home. We offer a wide range of home styles for every family's needs and a low cost of living. In fact, housing costs are up to 30% lower than the national average. The towns of Hartford and Beaver Dam are surrounded by lush agricultural land, which 
transforms the backbone of our vibrant economy. This well-established farming culture is a part of the fabric of our community, bringing welcome traditions and family values that help create our unique mix of town and country heritage. Here, you can breathe fresh air and practice healthy living with locally grown produce and a top-rated wellness center. Ohio County also provides award-winning health care locally without the crowds and cost of larger cities. Ohio County Healthcare is equipped not only to provide care for patients at the workplace, but also we have the ability to provide care as an outpatient city. We have seven day a week clinics where patients can come and be treated not only themselves, but also their family members. We also have extensive specialty support, and we're really excited about our new $15 million surgical center that we're building because we have the latest technology. Okay, okay it went up $7 million. I was going to say, I thought it was a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> extraordinary backdrop for heavy industry and manufacturing, which benefits from our fresh country environment while still close to major routes and customers. In fact, Ohio County is located within a day's drive of 65% of the U.S. population. This is kind of the crossroad to the uh, two more places crossing the U.S. and the You forget you were in there? It might have talked in a sense for us, but it would be a lot of trouble. Most all of our customers are going. So, it's just really a good location. Location wise, the uh, workforce is here to make it work. Well, location is, is great, uh, not just regionally, but, but nationally. This is a wonderful location to do business. We're so close to I 65, you know, we're basically 120 to 200 miles away from major metropolitan areas. And so it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to reduce shipping rates for customers. Uh, just since we're located, we can travel really more in Southeast United States and they drive. Located between Kentucky's third and fourth largest cities, employers have many okay. access to a large <laughs> scale workforce. My grandfather started a business in Ohio County, and we were located here in 2008. The plant was here, and we decided to expand the business. It just made sense to build in Ohio County. Our business friendly environment, low utility rates, access to natural resources, and a well trained workforce make Ohio County an excellent place to do business. Not only does the state offer incentives for economic growth in the industry, Ohio County generally has lower taxes than some surrounding counties, and their, their officials are willing to work with uh, companies here that are planning capital investment, planning growth, to make sure that uh, they can carry they can and support that industry. Water is probably what we are, because we have water, we can have water fishing, we can see water fishing, so the water sources are very affordable, um, it's expensive. Power, of course, right here, uh, affordable electric, so it's just right here, it's going to go obviously. And it is, uh, it is very reasonable. And we've got land. In fact, over a thousand acres of land in the Bluegrass Crossings Business Center alone. We're eager to have your company be a part of our community. Not only is Ohio County place to make a living. It's a perfect place to make a life. Welcome home to Ohio County. I really like that. Is there ground to be from Ohio County? Well done. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that's um, on the website. It is on the website. Did they put it up there yet? Yes. It is on the website. That's going to be huge for me for recruitment. But that does a great job helping me, like, be able to showcase our recruiting positions. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially with <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. Good job. Thanks. Oh, what's happening to Beaver Dam? Well, we just keep on trucking. Usually it's a garbage truck right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> Can't please everybody. Uh, we've had a lot going on. Right now, we've been participating in a virtual group with performers and entertainers and management companies out of Nashville. Uh, they've been getting a lot of accolades for the shows we were able to pull off this year. Uh, there's some venues talking about how they're going to do this and do that, and he called me today and said, and I get to set up and tell them we've already done that. You know, where have you been? So, really proud of what we've done with our shows this fall. We've already got some concerts booked for next year. We're ready to go for this team ahead. However, 
we have to go about doing it. Uh, been in constant contact with a retail consultant we've been working with. I do know we've got two different businesses working right now with our purchasing property. Uh, I'll throw this out there, and I'm Jody, and I've talked about it quite a bit. And I'm really, really disappointed. The timing was not really good. We had two hotel chains come into the county. One was here for a visit in February, and the other was scheduled to come in in March, and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now, hotel is the uh, the ones we've talked to. That's one industry that's not even talking to anybody right now because they're they have no idea how this is going to emerge from this. So I was really disappointed because I, I think I'm not naive. I don't think we'd gotten both of them, but I didn't care. If we could get, if we could like one of them. We've been happy campers to set that in, but but we're still working them. And uh, we've got some other contacts we've been working through this organization. We're in our third year. The, the one thing I liked about it is that we're able to pull together some information we have for the city on our uh, market area. Uh, our market area, and a lot of people don't believe me, but we've got the numbers to show it. Our market area has got a population of about 36,000 people based on actual people that come to town at least once a month over a 12 month period. So, or a 12 -month period or Not to period. be confused with labor market area. No, no, those is, there's a whole this lot is retail. More there this is retail people. people. Uh, so we're really, really happy about that. We've got a lot going on. I know we've done a lot this summer downtown trying to have somewhat of a normalcy. Uh, it's been a little different. A lot of stuff outdoors and, you know, we encourage the social distancing and we encourage the mask and some do and some don't. I'm not going to be the police, but, you know, we've really worked hard to try to, to keep some normalcy and, and have events and stuff that are safe. and. Uh, I've only been contacted one time from anybody with contact tracing, and as it turned out, their response was, was there within 50, uh, in six feet of them for 15 minutes without a mask, and it was an outdoor, so it didn't apply. Uh, I know we've really been working with the uh, some of the new business. The microbrewery is really starting to take off a little bit. They had a big weekend, and, and it's bringing people in. In fact, when I was talking to the retail guy, he said that he was pinging the cell phone numbers in the end, and he said, you see the steady numbers. He was talking about Beats. He said, Beats has gotten busy in <laughs> It's starting to once we kind of yeah. open back up. So uh, we're in the process of new things to see. We were in the process of hiring a new city clerk. So we've got some things that kind of held us back a little bit, but we're, we're doing real well. And excited about what 2021 is going to do. And can't wait for New Year's Eve. <laughs> it's got to end sometime. It's got to. <laughs> Jody? Um, just kind of reiterating what Paul said. And um, I attended a state meeting last week, and Ohio County was like sort of out as progressing forward during all this. Um, the bigger dam staying open with their drive-ins, that uh, the state was very impressed with that. And um, the state is going to be offering some help for tourism. Of course, they only function on a 1% of the transient tax, and hotels are down to about 24% occupancy, which you want, they want to be at around 72 to 75 is functional. So they're earning big time. But um, they realize that, and they're going to be trying to help uh, the tourism, both of us, and doing more for marketing and things because they're pushing that stay close. What did go? That's what Scott, you looked it up. Go far, stay close. They're still pushing that. And yesterday alone, I had 15 visitors at the museum. So uh, some were from Owensboro and Morgantown, but they were from Texas, Arkansas, and Alabama. People are traveling. I hope so, they came by the home place and got the little money. They did, but we're not open to receive donations. Oh. <laughs> it's just the drive-through. So, but um, so they're coming to our county. Our county's our county's out there. I know them. They're they're coming here. I don't have anything. Just I thought the video was very good. I'm impressed with that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Paula. Um. I'll to be a little agricultural, what's kind of going on in agriculture. Of course, you know that uh, harvest is going on right now, um, which has been um, slightly affected from all the spring rains that we have, um, that we had this year has caused, um, you know, caused a lot of flooding and replant. And so um, harvest to me, for us especially, seems like it's kind of drawn out. And it, you know, we come back in with a lot of late beans and things, so it seems like it's going a little, it's going to take a little longer before we're completely finished. Um, I'll tell you, um, and as far as Corona affecting agriculture, I feel like it's had a minimal effect, um, which is great for agriculture. Um, you know, 
That's great. Uh, uh, one place that I have seen um, it did affect, we, I don't know if you know, we have um, turkeys and we sell through uh, Farbest Farms in Indiana. And so they were slightly affected. Um, for example, we had a 10% cut on one of our flocks that brought us less birds just because they were seeing a fluctuation in um, companies requesting and they have so much export. So there was, you know, a little bit of export affected there. So, but we only had one flock that was affected. So we felt like that was minimal compared to what it could have been. So, finishing up as far as cattle, fall calving is finishing up, and um, yeah. Or how is how is the meat processing going? Are they getting are those cattle being processed now? Or are we still having a whole lot of problems with that? Now I ha that seems like it was a lot of um, local butchers where yes. you know it seemed like it picked up everybody. You know there wasn't meat in the groceries or people were having trouble, so they said everyone's trying to buy you know, from a local farmer and have it butchered. Well, so that's had up a lot of these local butchers yeah. is what it seemed like. And so I haven't heard though if they've caught up or, um, you know, we even, our bison, um, we used to take them to a local butcher in McLean County and his whole place burned down, beef and bacon. Yeah. So um, that was a common one. And um, so his market even, you know, a lot of local people you know, took their animals there. I mean, the owners, they're not even accepting people to put on the list. Well, well and the owners stopped yeah, deer. Yeah, they they yeah. stopped processing deer, which I'm like, well, where else do you take them? I mean, yeah. Right. Right. I'm just screwed <laughs> <laughs> I know you got something lost, um, but. Well, I, I mean, I'll leave with COVID because obviously it's what we're doing this year. Um, I will say in, in relation to what um, Seth led with that we're in the red, um, today was the day we have our weekly COVID response team meeting and that's all of our executive team and all of our clinical areas and as well as our operational community. Um, we've seen a large uptick in testing. There's a lot more um, community spread testing and for the first time we're not seeing it clustered it's not a long-term care facility or it's not a, a certain industry um, um, one thing that we know we're concerned of is that we have some hospitalization now more than we've had in the past and that's to us what we're watching because a lot of people will, will get it and it'll be mild and it'll be okay but we definitely have seen an increase this week in our hospitalization rate and our pos positivity rate. I think the state, I didn't watch what the state's was. Do you know, Seth, what's the, or Paul, what's the state's positivity rate? I think today it was like 4.3 or 4.4. Yeah, so Ohio County, and I can only speak to what we're testing at Ohio County Healthcare, but that's that our, you know, we're probably testing the majority for the county, and we were at 16% positivity rate. So we have 90, the judge reported 93 positive cases, and Nine total deaths. Is that right? What do you said? Ninety-three active. Nine, yeah, yeah. There's five hundred yeah. and I don't mean total. I'm yeah, right now yeah. active. So I think we have thirteen positives today. But I think what we need to be thinking about for economic development is how do we keep these businesses open? And that's encouraging, just like Paul said, when you have events, encourage them to wear their mask. Keep your six feet distance. I mean. It's going to be with us for a while, but if we all use our safeguards, then I think that we're going to be able to move ahead and keep having these industries. Um, I worked really closely with the, um, with, um, the amphitheater and um, any businesses that you think that might need it. I've got four decals that have the healthcare our healthcare logo on it, and they encourage six feet distance, and you can just put them right on the floor. We've got masks. I've got hand sanitizer. I'll get literature. We want to be community partners to any of our businesses to help you all stay open and active and, and safe. Um, I think healthcare industry across our country as a whole, we're starting to see the volumes come back up. People are scared and they're scared to come into healthcare facilities, but I can say we're seeing our, our, our visits and our volumes increasing. The majority of our, within our Hawking healthcare, our service lines are at, or close to pre-COVID level. Um, we ask you all help um, spread that word that um, 
healthcare industries are going out of the way to make sure there are safe methodologies for you to receive care. Don't put up care when you need it. Um, specific to Ohio County Healthcare, we just ended our fiscal year. It was a good year. Even with COVID, we had a good year. And spe speaking specific to economic development recruitment, we just had a great month. Um, we brought a new urologist on. We're very excited about a young urologist. He's been practicing about five years, Michael Kotwitz. He's brought a lot of new procedures just in the month he's been with us. We just purchased him a, a beautiful new laser and he's very excited. So I think he's gonna really help us expand our urology services. Um, we just signed a contract to expand our ENT, which I'll be able to share more later. And we are in the final stages of negotiations and contracts right now for a new full-time orthopedic surgeon. And that's huge. That is a huge service line for our, our industry. Um, so we're excited about that. And we just did our first bariatric surgery in Ohio County last week. Great result. Um, Dr. Nicole Akers, who was one of our recruits that we brought in last year, started a weight loss management program. Um, and at the same time she joined us, we um, brought on Dr. John Jeffries, a general surgeon, who did an additional fellowship in mentally invasive procedures. And that included a lot of bariatric surgery. So he just completed his first bariatric surgery. So we're very excited. Those are all expanded access to care. That's new physicians and new service lines for our, our, our citizens. And we're moving ahead with our surgical build out. We've got um, architects contracted and new renderings being done. And we are um, hoping to break ground maybe as early as March. There we are. Yes, sir. I want to talk to you sometime how we can partner on Obviously, with the surgical unit and stuff like that, you're going to have people coming in from more than just you know, an art group. Do you get them into partner businesses and bigger businesses? Stuff sure. Like that here to figure out a way to tie um, Sure. And I have a specific request for UCC from an economic development standpoint. I know now that we have uh, the postpartum depression treatment there that's Zero not seven. done. It's not done anywhere else, what, in the state? Or not anywhere else is. outside of Mississippi, I don't think. No, it is. There's other there's other sites within the state now that do it. Oh, there yeah. are. We were just the first. Yes. Okay. I would like to get video of someone, a, a physician, someone discussing that because those unique things that we offer here is what we'll do exactly what Paul said. I've got a 15 second, a 30 second, and a 60 Perfect. second video. We can, can you share, share those with yep. me? Yeah, and some of them are on our Facebook page, some of them will be, oh, oh, we just launched a new website, so they'll all be on there, so. But I can't get awesome. them off there, I'll need you to yeah. send them to me. Yeah. I'll be more than glad to send you anything on Zorelso. And what she's referring to is, Zorelso is a, a um, postpartum depression drug, it's the only drug approved by the FDA for the treatment of postpartum depression. And it's, um, we're one of, I want to say a handful of places in Kentucky now that take care of it. And it's under the direction of Dr. Elizabeth Hoffman. So I don't know if y'all know Bob Rahman, but she's incredible. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks, Cece. I know I said a lot. That's we have right. a lot to we tell. Have good information. <laughs> Thank you. Good way to be about it. Mike's probably got a couple things from yeah, OCTC. Um, well, we're still holding our own. Uh, everything's back. I won't say normal operation, but um, to put it in perspective, we've had to go to a flexible model. And classes started August 17th, but we've been pretty vigilant bringing students in and finishing up coursework. Last year this time, when we started last fall, we had 42 out of a little over 500 classes with a hybrid component. This year we had 535 classes and 535 had a hybrid component, so we had 100%. That provides an issue uh, that we've all been focusing on, which is uh, high-speed internet. Whether it be Ohio County, Davis County, McLean County, you know, Hancock County doesn't matter. We've still got a high speed internet issue. So um, we are working to hopefully rectify that situation. Uh, CARES funds did help some students with uh, technology, but it still hasn't solved the high speed internet problem. We've got grant uh, proposals out now for uh, laptop loaner programs. We have a uh, 
big focus now on what I'll just say flexible coursework, flexible training to meet the workforce needs around uh, being able to um, allow the students, most of them have to work, so they, you know, have a flexible model so they can actually work and go to school at the same time so they can provide for their family. But we've got some excellent work and learn model programs that are going off and one, one I'll just share with you right off the bat is the GoFame program. So if there's any company, that, especially around the uh, Go Careers, which is business, or uh, GoFame, which is uh, advanced manufacturing, there's an opportunity for them to sponsor students to go through this. And to tell you how big it is, we had one company last week pick up 16 unsponsored students. That's awesome. one fell school. And uh, that's $16 an hour job for room for advanced. And they're working around a two-day week schedule working on the school. So um, we're discussing, you know, short-term training options. Uh, so. We've also got workforce solutions options, and especially if they're in Ohio County, we've got opportunities. If, uh, say, for example, Purdue came in, and we, at the state's never worked with Purdue before, I think uh, there's an opportunity for trains funded to pay 75% of the cost, so the company's only out 25% of the training. They've just got to start five and finish five in the program. Um, but if they have, work with them before they can still get 50% of that cut. So it's a pretty good opportunity for businesses. Um, like I said, we're just glad that this, as somebody said, we're just glad to be back open for business. So we were able to get all spring students and all summer students within reason. I'd say all but about five percent of each semester call it. Some just, you know, when they scattered, it's hard to get them to come back. I can staff done a good job. That's all I've got. Um, to add to that, in case you guys don't know, any company that is hiring anyone who's currently drawing unemployment, they can pay up to 50%. I say they, as in I think Brad has the money, the Career Center partners also with OCTC, so all these programs are going on, but just as a basic, uh, you know, brief about it, 50% of the cost of labor up to six months is fully covered if you just report it, simple reporting too, it's just basically turning in their time card to the right people at grad, uh, and at the career center, and they can cover 50% of the salaries uh, or wages of, of those staff members for up to six months. So to add to that, not only will they cover wages, I forgot to add this, they'll cover $5,000 basically for the training, so they'll pretty much cover the training cost, and I almost salaries. forgot this, we've got the new Experiential Learning Center, which uh, works with every one of our students to get them very similar to an internship program, uh, but they can get them either a mentorship, an internship, or an apprenticeship. So, and that cuts across every program we have. That's Associate Arts, Associate Fine Arts, Associate Science, Associate Applied Science, which are all your technical programs. Less than 100% of our students can take part in that, and that is a five-year, $1.3 million grant. That's awesome. So we've got a, um, like I said, a, a center that works with the students, gets them placed, actually works with the companies to match the students to the company. And we've had some excellent success in this. It's brand new. It was officially rolled out at Rooster Booster October 1st. So. I mean, there's a student that wants to succeed. OCTC is going to come along and decide if they're there and they're putting their effort forward, there's no way that they have such great student coaching success. It's amazing. We're back here designing a, a program for talking to the meeting, so it's kind of interesting. All of these uh, programs, it's not always that they, they can duplicate services, basically, but because of COVID, a lot of these things can overlap so I mean you can get 50% of their salaries paid they can be an intern and have you know get schooling or you know whatever during the time they're training there um, there's all kinds of programs that can overlap to save the company a lot of money um, and help support these um, students workers however you want to classify them so. based around being a work ready county the state's done an excellent job with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship for the fall and spring semester. One of the, if it's in one of the five highways out of man field, it will pay 100% of the tuition. If we can just get it for a cover summer, we'll be in good shape. 
they pulled some of them back this past year, which hurt a lot of people, especially on these short-term commencements. But they've done an excellent job with the Board of Regents Kentucky Scholarship to pay for that. We want to know how we got to make it. Uh, as you all probably know, the physical court uh, acknowledged our new members tonight. So, officially new members tonight. Uh, welcome to, to uh, Andy, Tara, David, uh, somebody else raise their hand. Thank you for the staff as well. Uh, and Lauren, sorry Lauren. Uh, I just expected you to be one of the but uh, they were acknowledged tonight. Uh, uh, that's really all we got with the court. But I will say that Purdue uh, has picked back up. You know, they're no longer uh, throwing away the half the chicken. Uh, you know, they were still having a lot of issues with it where they're having to get rid of more than they want. Uh, just getting staffing in there. It's amazing how much this extra money on this unemployment makes people want to stay on unemployment. Uh, we have had a few cases out there, uh, but they're they're spread out. They're you know they're not necessarily uh, bunched up in carloads or or in one area. Just just something happening, and uh, but we're still fighting the battle of, of getting people back, and uh, you know. It, it, as we were just talking, you know, we're trying to set up programs and work with programs on different things uh, in my department of water and wastewater, you know, trying to get programs set up to where we can train new people. Uh, uh, anybody in the water field or wastewater field, the average age of operators is 55 to 60. Uh, a lot of them is well older than that, but we're getting a few newer. Uh, Anything we can do to uh, up that and get new people into it because it's a really good occupation. People will always need water and they will always need to go to the bathroom. So it's kind of like garbage, you know. Uh, it, it's a necessity, so. Uh, but Purdue's doing good and, and the county's doing good. Uh, you're all probably aware the county did raise taxes again here a few weeks ago, so. Uh, to uh, harvest more of the money from the whiskey barrels, but uh, you know I didn't vote for it, but it was passed, and uh, which I thought was irrelevant. What I thought, but uh, it did pass, so there is a little less leeway in our pushing for that. You know, anytime we pass a tax in that realm, specifically set. For that, it's harder to sell trying to get a factory in here, trying to get somebody in that's going to have some product. Uh, but it wasn't a whole lot, but it was enough. So, that's all I got. Scott, it's up to you, big guy. Yeah. Interesting. You know, Mike touched on something that uh, I hadn't forgotten until he mentioned it, talking about high speed internet. We were actually working on a bill last session that we thought had a good chance of passing that it would allow. Kennedy and some electric companies to sell high-speed internet because they already have the infrastructure. And the reason you don't see AT&T doing that because they can't afford to go out in these rural areas and set the infrastructure. So it basically would allow co-ops and electric companies who had the infrastructure to uh, provide internet service, which would be huge to rural counties, and especially up in eastern Kentucky with their terrains like this, you know, and they already have Everybody's got electric one. Uh, Is that Warren Rural Electric already doing that? They've started it, yeah. But uh, I don't Warren, think it's... Warren Rural's not under the same rules as Kennedy yeah. is. Yeah, so, so anyway, I don't know if any, any of you all followed that, but uh, there was an article in the paper, Owensboro paper, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, the judge over there came out against it. Well, it's because of the... Uh, under Governor Bashir, what, what was that called? Kentucky... We did it. Ohio County did it. Kentucky, Kentucky Wire. Wire. Yes. Okay, and it's it's just not, you know, it's not taking off. But anyway, there'll be AT&T is a big lobbyist against that. So you know, that's who come out against the bill and so forth. So 
uh, there's two angles. They, they're trying to get the PSC to approve something. If that doesn't happen, there will be a bill filed in, uh, in the legislature to address that. So maybe we can get something started there. Uh, Scott, how was that addressed in other states? Do you know where the I bill filed? I love the fact that the infrastructure is already in place. Yeah, the infrastructure is there, so it's a, a huge cost. It's more time in the legislation that prevents yes. energy and some of these co-ops from, from being able to do what, it. What grounds do any legislator use to vote against well, I can tell you that it was getting some pushback in the Senate uh, because AT&T, again, I'm going to say lobbyists, which means money, mm -hmm. uh, probably has donated to some campaigns, and I hate to say that, but sure. I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, it, it will pass the House. I have no doubt it'll pass the House. If there's a hang up, it will be in the Senate. Well, what ground can they use? That, they can't get up there and say because I got lobbyists' money. No, they, I, don't, so I really don't. Do it never got that far uh, because COVID hit, mm -hmm. but we were getting pushback from the Senate saying that, that they didn't have the votes. Well, they, they didn't because we tried to get them, even though it's COVID, it was, we was getting ready to get out of there. We wanted it passed, right. and uh, we couldn't get it passed. So uh, it, it'll be brought back up. So anyway, it's a great bill. I mean, it, it's just open market. I mean, it's just you know it is what it is. And obviously, AT and T or some of those people wouldn't want it, but you know they've got the market. You can go five miles outside of town here and can't get AT and D service, mm -hmm. or you can drive down two thirty one here in town and boom damn and, and drop. We yeah. sent letters uh, of support yeah. for the judge sent letters of support. Scott sent letters of support. I mean, he, he is the support, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. But I mean, this this was going to PSC first because that way it doesn't have to go through any legislation. So that's that's the route we're going first. Hopefully, it, it's passed. Yeah. The other issue, you know, I deal with every day, and I know Jody's dealt with this too, is unemployment. We still have people in Ohio County that have not received one unemployment check. Mm -hmm. that are still unemployed. And they're legitimately, you know, it's not that they're trying to get something they don't, you know, they paid in, they should get it. And uh, for a while, I'd say a couple months ago, we were having good results with the people that we knew. They were calling them that day or whatever. The biggest frustration from the people we deal with is they can't talk to anybody. Right. You know, when you're in the queue, somebody will call you back. The calls never come. You know, and that, that's been the biggest frustration. And one of the questions they ask, asked me, the Owensboro paper is doing an article about the races, and I'm going to pose, but they still want my viewpoint. But that's what I said to them. Look, people want to, in the, in, the, in the time of need, people want somebody to talk to them, even if you just listen, you know? So, all good yes, but, I, you know, so I said there needed to be an unemployment contact in every county where they could talk to somebody. And it's people that they knew. That, well, they, that have, actually, they have the contact here. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're doing the job with the unemployment yeah, office. Yeah, we give y'all cell phone numbers out all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know it's well, okay. I mean, I, I, know. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I just want to feel like that, that I can help. But you know, sometimes I tell people, look, I, I've been able to help a lot of people, but when I turn your name into the person that I need to turn in, when it gets there, I can't do any more than that. And that's the problem we're running into yeah. now. They just stopped really responding. They're not. Well, they moved the people though too. I mean, the one lady, I mean, I was getting great results. Everybody I turned in was good. And they moved her to another department. So, I mean, you know, and it's just, yeah. But it, it's it's just been frustrating on, I guess, the, and, and I know it's tough, and I don't want to be too critical of anybody. This is something nobody's ever dealt with before. But however many months we're into it, people should at least have somebody had called them and say, look, we're working, either because it's not just us. There's hundreds of thousands in the state of Kentucky yeah. that still are dealing with this. And I mean, they're ready to lose their house, their cars, uh, you know, everything. And, and it's, it's unfortunate when the money's there, it's been provided from the federal government even to, uh, through the CARES Act to, to make up some of this money. So, the, you know, that's, that's been a lot of what our issues have been. The other issues, and you know, it's, it is politics, it is what it is, but, you know, the governor has unprecedented amount of power during a emergency. So there's not been much discussion with any legislators other than maybe the ones right there around around him. And maybe that would be the same way if it was a Republican or not. I would hope, though. I mean, we're out here hearing the complaints. I, I wish there was just a little more open lines of communication and, uh, uh, on, on things that come. We've got people that are, are going to lose their businesses over this that aren't going to be able to reopen. 
uh, and I don't I don't know the balance. I mean, I know you know before Brady's. I'm like Paul, you know, we want people to wear masks, but is it up to me to go over to their table and say, make sure you put your mask on if you go to the restroom, okay? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I just, I, I, I'm not, and I may end up getting in trouble over it or whatever, but uh, yeah, you know, I wear a mask and everyone comes sit down at my table or whatever, uh, and we've got our table spaced out, just like all other restaurants here in do, but I mean, it's hard for us to, be the mask, please. What's this point mean the most on the record? You wouldn't believe the, the phone call or the text I would do with the picture. Here's somebody not wearing a mask. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah, and that, I mean, yeah. Blocking their phone number was not the right yeah. answer. Yeah. But it, it, you know, and it, it's, I get it. People, you know, if, if you have health issues and all that, you, you need to stay away. And you need to, you know, you need to try to wear a mask when you're, when you're around people and all that. But I, I don't know how you make them. I don't. I don't know as a as a, in the Constitution how you can mandate people to do that. Whether you believe in that or not, whether you think they should or not, as a business owner, we really struggle with that because, you know, there's some that are pretty set in their mind, and, and we're struggling anyway at 50 percent occupancy, which we were at 30. No, we were at 25, went to 30, and then now 50. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid it may go back down to 30, which will kill a lot of businesses. And uh, you know, if I if I had to make a living out of it, it, it would be really tough, tough for us. Unfortunately, you know, I, I don't have to make any money out of that business. It's, as long as my employees are paid, then everything's good. And you know, a business like ours, that's 31 employees. Yeah, you know, at what point do you see it happening now where people will just ignore it? Well, yeah, I mean, we're already seeing that. Yeah. We're we're seeing them now. No. You used to they would come in. Conscious, well, you know, yeah. basically, we don't care if you lose everything. Shut it down. Well, you know, the and I'm worried about that a little bit because the governor has basically said that they're going to start, I guess, upping that enforcement part of that and going to businesses and citing them and finding them for if the if the customer doesn't it. if you you know I can control my employees right. they wear you know. And, and I can control that situation, but I have a hard time controlling, you know, we have, we want them to wear it when they come in and sit down because that's what we were told to do. But as far as enforcing that, what authority do I have to enforce that other than say, well, you need to leave our business. We need everybody we can get, or we're not going to have a business. And the governor should recognize that. Yeah. I think that you just have to model it. And, and like, if you're working, well, you have to control what you can control. Right. And, and like I can say, in healthcare, it, 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 it's a different world. Yeah. It, we just wear a mask. It's mandated. Yeah. We it, it's just across the board. But you just gotta model the best the best practice that you can. Another thing, and have I, the tools yeah. ready for them. The other thing I'd like to say is, you know, no matter what your views are, th this is an important election, one way or the other. If you're on oh, one side yeah. or the other, so just my my advice there is just make sure you vote. You know, every, every, this is gonna be an important election. You know, when it's to me this year, you know, just a little bit of my political views, it's, it's more about the issues than it is the two running. And, you know, that's just the way I feel about it. It's, you know, whatever this stands for, this stands for, or whatever, but uh, it's, it's definitely, I've never seen the divide. We really are divided, and I wish there was a way that, you know, the, the, we got so far on the right, we got so far on the left, there's hardly any middle people and I feel probably most of us in here are middle of the road type people, you know. But there, unfortunately, there's not there's not that many many of us, or maybe there's more we just don't hear. So I don't know. But well, there's not enough to get everything passed. Yeah. There's not enough middle of the road people to get anything passed. So. Yeah. But anyway, just vote. Speaking Somebody. of which, did you guys vote if you haven't yet? Scott's waiting until election day out of principle, but I voted, so he shamed me. <laughs> I am making, I am I out of principle. But I did vote. Awesome. <laughs> but it, it is easier now to vote than it's ever been, so really, right. you, there's not very many excuses for not voting, but I'm just, uh, you know, I just, I, I think it's just a matter of principle, me, I want to vote in person, and that's just. Well, I voted I mean, in person. And that's just, that's just I my just view. Voted early. <laughs> You know, that's just my own personal view. We can go to Walmart and all those places during all this. We, you know, and that that's just me being stupid. But I don't, I don't know if anybody, I know if some of you were at the court. I voted right before I come in today. Was that what the big here. tent was? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I walked through and voted, and Beth said, come on inside, let's, let's look at the inside. And I walked in, I said, well, I'm going to vote early and vote often anyway. That's the way the big guys do it. <laughs> And she said, well, come in here and try to vote. 
and I just walked out of that and walked right inside and they took my license and they scanned it and a big red flag come up and said, oh, boom, it. ballot already casted. Yeah. So it says it's already been casted. Says it's already casted. So, you know, I was I was what, what, pleasantly pleased. What flag did you? Did you just get to try to commit a felony? Yep. You showed your ID. It's just a demonstration of democracy. People don't believe in showing ID to vote. I know. And that's exactly what they did. You know, they scanned my ID and it said, boom, can't vote. So that is a good trial there. I mean, maybe, you know, somebody's going to find a way that. Oh yeah, no matter what you do. What did it give, what reason so we did check it today. What reason did it give for not can vote? Ballot already cast. Oh. He'd already voted. I already, already voted. voted. I was, I voted so outside. you see if Five it minutes check, prior. It and I just walked right straight in. I didn't give it time. I just walked right straight in. And of course it's internet. You know how that is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Last mm -hmm. thing I would say though is if any of y'all ever need me, I'm, I always give people my phone number. And if you have any issues at all, I, I do really, I welcome your calls because that's what my job is, is to try to help people in, uh, no matter what it is. So, uh, like I said, I've been busy with unemployment stuff, but if there's ever any other issues, I mean, I get calls on roads a lot and things like that. I, they, we did a lot of work out here on 136, uh, you know, and I think it's been a, been a big help in that. You know, we started ringing some ears there, and uh, I think the judge did not call them, and some other people did, and, some work done out there, but, uh, uh, you know, and, it, and I really feel like, you know, as a legislator, your first year, you don't know what you're doing, you know, your second year, you start feeling yourself around, and then uh, the second year, they, they started, I started noticing they started putting me on a lot more committees, and it's like, you know, when we had the education thing, basically, I helped write a lot of the legislation that came down during this uh, pandemic. I'm on the education committee, and there's there's about three of us that were practicing educators. So we got to write a lot of this about, you know, counting present and make sure that we weren't getting penalized by low attendance during during these things that would financially bankrupt the, the school system. And we also there's a there was a VW settlement uh, uh, millions of dollars that came down to. Uh, there were a lot of people up there wanting that to go to urban cities for uh, transit buses and, and some things like that and we had a we had a knockdown drag out with the senate and uh oh i can't even able to get two buses i think half price on two buses wasn't that what it was so you end up buying four buses for the price what was it end up getting three buses for the price of two yes yeah, which is about a hundred thousand dollar savings but uh it was helpful that i was on that committee because if I wouldn't, I don't know that Ohio County would have got those buses, to be honest with you. So, uh, as you, if you spend, spend a little more time out there, they start giving you a little more, I guess, uh, voice or, or whatever. And uh, another example was, uh, you know, I've got a senator up there that doesn't like me. I don't care to admit it. I don't like him either. <laughs> and, uh, and he's in leadership. And, and I had a bill for the city of Owensboro that, it was change one word and had to do with ambulance contracts and actually will help Ohio County too, but they're the ones that needed it this time. It was making them bid ambulance contracts every year. Well, you know how much it is to run an ambulance service. So if I'm bidding and I'm the owner of that company and I'm only going to get a one-year contract, I mean, you know, that's, that's not any good. So changed it one word, passed it to the house, 96 to zero. Well, nobody voted against it. Send it to the Senate and it sit there. You know, so I call the, the guy, the chairman of the committee because it's got to go through a hearing over there and he says, look, you know what's going on just like I do. And I said, that's fine. And it, it was the, I don't care, give you his name. Damon, Damon Thayer, you know, he's, the, he's in leadership in the Senate and he was holding up. You know, he was holding the, holding the bill up because uh, I voted against one of his bills and he's a Republican in the committee. Uh, in committee, I killed his bill, Jeff Hoover and I did. Because it was a terrible bill. It had to do with Secretary of State's office. And it's horrible. And it was struck down in court. It ended up passing it because he got a piggyback or whatever. It was struck down in court. It's a horrible bill. So anyway, he's held that against me. I got that put in a budget bill. And, and he threw a fit about it, but it passed in the budget bill because my leadership said, 
it's staying in there. You can argue about it all you want. That's in there. That's a great bill staying in there. But sometimes that's how you you know you have to do stuff, and it's uh, it's you know just like every every other profession, you run into some that it doesn't matter if it's for the good of the people or not. It's just a matter of you know they want to show you who's in charge. But uh, I want to tell him that I won that one, <laughs> and, and I will. <laughs> I'm in a polite way. But. I'm just glad to figure out you're running out of polls. I'm going to stop going door to door now. People have been looking at me straight. It's okay. You can write another name under that. Well, I appreciate that. You, see, you can write another name in there. You can just write it in somebody. <laughs> I think I took enough time. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Scott. Not a whole lot. I guess I represent small business. I, I, you know, obviously, I think every small business, large business alike has been affected by COVID, but I really have to applaud Ohio County. I think they've really rallied around a lot of our small business owners. Um, yeah. they have. I, I mean, everybody has made an extra effort to try and shop local, local support local. We've seen an increase in tips for servers and other nice. business owners. It's It's been, it's been incredible support locally, I think, on that end. And believe it or not, we're seeing some entrepreneurship. I think I just saw an announcement for a, a new drive-in burger place opening in Hartford. Um, they have a new gym coming into the old Sphinx Pharmacy. I think Beaver Dam down in Midtown. Y'all got a bar and a, and a flea market type set up coming in, I think. And uh, so there's, you and know. several others on the Yeah, yeah. So there's obviously um, hope out there. and People aren't giving up on the idea of opening a new business, which is great because, you know, when you think about it, not everybody's spending a lot of cash right now. So no. there's definitely some concern there. But uh, I'll make a note, too, that... Uh, our Planning and Zoning Commission for Hartford and Beaverdam. We've been meeting about our comprehensive plan recently, and I'm uh, very excited about the new plan that we're going to present to the fiscal port. Um, if you have any experience at all with planning and zoning, you'll know that it's always been a nightmare to try and get something rezoned yeah. in, in our county. And we are now looking at changing everything up instead of going from just a, a strict zoning to now more of like a district, where if it oh, may be, overlay. yeah, like an overlay of sorts, where it may be R1 where it's all residential, but if you want to put in a small neighborhood coffee shop in that R1, so long as you meet A, B, and C, you can apply to have something rezoned now. Or, well, once this gets passed, and I think that'll open up a lot of avenues for people for or business to come into areas that normally we'd always have to say, well, can't zone it, so you can't do anything with it. So I think that's going to be very, very exciting for any potential new business. Open up a lot more, open up a lot more potential uh, locations than what we normally have. When is the, isn't there like a fall open house and a Christmas open house, like, um, for all of our small businesses? Um, there There's was supposedly a Ohio County something, small business open house or something like that recently, but it ended up only being Beaver Dam businesses. I'm not quite sure how that went for Ohio County, but, um, Tiffany, I don't know if the chamber did that or who did that. Ohio County. So, um, well, they usually do the Christmas. Yeah, usually, that's what I'm looking for the, the day. before Thanksgiving. Sometime in there. Before, usually yeah. in November, But um, I know that I know a lot of the businesses right now. It's just kind of up in the air what what they want to do with you know if they want to participate in some of that. But um, I can tell you, my family's business obviously sore heads. You know, November sixth and seventh. Okay. They're planning on doing like the small business Saturday weekend that sort of thing and. Uh, they've opened up this Christmas shop and they're going to start opening a soft opening on Friday night. Soft so. opening is Friday. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's obviously business. Stop in at the chapel. Please buy lots of stuff because I don't want any of that in my stocking. So uh, <laughs> I'm happy for all y'all to buy. You're not getting married though. Nobody's getting married. Nobody's getting married. Nobody's getting married. Nobody's getting married. Uh, I don't have a whole lot. Uh, I am working for the SBA now. Uh, and the SBA. I know Scott's familiar with it, uh, did the Paycheck uh, Protection Program. There's a lot of businesses that got that loan, $5 million of them, to be exact, for about $512 billion. Uh, and that, the purpose of that was to protect uh, paychecks. And I'm curious, I might come and eat sometime over there. You said beefs was the name of your place? Is that beaver down? Okay. <laughs> You can give me directions to make sure they show up sometimes. Yeah. Uh, that, that program is to the forgiveness stage now. So everybody that applied for the loan wants to turn that into a grant, so to speak. 
Uh, the SBAs, we have started processing some of those. Um, it's one of the things I'm doing. Uh, it's getting started slowly, as a lot of things in government uh, do. They process about 10,000 of them. Uh, I keep hearing uh, that there's probably going to be another round of that program. Uh, and that this time it's going to be directed even more to the smaller businesses. Uh, there was a lot of consensus that uh, the big corporations uh, received a lot of money. Uh, minorities uh, didn't receive as much. Mom and Pops didn't receive as much. So I do think that in the near future, and it's tied up in, in, it's tied up in the stimulus, uh, that you will see that come out again. Is that something you can reapply for as a small business? That's, that's yes, that's yeah, one election. of the things that they're talking. So you could have got a PPP loan in the beginning, and you've paid or had that forgiven, and then now you, you should be able to apply again. No final details uh, on that, but uh, I do a lot of reading, and, and that seems to be where it may be headed. Thank you. Thank all of you good information for us. Um, if, if, for those of you who didn't know, uh, Brad got a $3.3 million uh, CARES Act loan and they've opened the revolving loan fund at 0% interest for the first 12 months. Then after that, probably 75% of problem like the rest of our revolving loan funds. All of the revolving loan applications that were in process for us have switched over. None of them have completed even still today, but Jenna did meet with them in my office with Andy uh, recently. Um, but we're not going to see any revolving loan applications come through us probably because they get zero percent interest from them for a year. So, That's um, awesome. so all the ones that were in process for us that actually do complete the application will most likely seek that fund before they before they come to us, and they can do a hundred percent of the project versus us doing 80% of the project. So they're going to they're gonna seek those funds first. And ours will be there available. Yes. Ours are still available and it's still there. But they have some partnerships though with Grab, maybe? Or? Well, I mean, they can do 100% of the project. So unless somebody needs more than $250,000, which right now is nobody that's talking to us, um, they're probably not going to see those funds. But they might. I mean, it's just the ones that we had in application process already, it's what Jenna and I were talking about, she has met with them, and they're most likely going to seek those funds before they see those funds. be available for new startup? Absolutely. It's a slick program. There's not going to be anything that really competes if you can fit in the box. Yeah. With that one. And no, almost no, everybody no, no fits in the box. The first year. Almost and everyone 75% of prime, that's. That's pretty Nothing cheap. Right That's pretty good, right? Prime's three and a quarter. And we so. do have over 400,000 things there that need to be loaned out. So if any way if you know of someone that a business or startup or whatever. Again, I mean, we've got, we've got lots of inquiries, but they're going to use those funds first because it's a better deal. <coughs> but yeah, we've got them available, and they can definitely apply. The application process is also easier, it looks like. Okay, so, anything else? Is there a comment? Motion to adjourn. Wait, tell us about the airport. <laughs> I just, um, I'm a, the chairman of the airport board, so uh, Jody has come to several of our airport board meetings and has been very involved in um, a lot of the things that we've done with the airport. I have never been able to make it to her meetings or to these meetings because normally they've been at lunchtime and now I work out of town. So, anyways, I was happy to be able to come and what everybody's got going on. Um, so if you guys don't know anything about the airport, I'll be glad to tell you all about it. It's a great place and a great thing to help business and ensure you don't have a family. So. Thank you. I hear a motion? Motion. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Uh, we adjourn. Uh,